Amen. Thank you, Mr. Mark, and thanks to all of you who are helping and making worship a possibility this morning. Thanks to all the folks who are running the cameras, the people who are running the computers, uh, the folks who are helping make sure that uh, this broadcast goes out and reaches as many people as possible. Uh, One of the things I was doing today was uh, sitting with my phone over on the pews here while the band was going and saying hi to folks, and there's so many people around our church I was able to connect with for just a few moments. It's so good to see you. I have a special hello I would like to say to someone, someone I saw commenting on the Facebook page, and that is Grandma Britt, Matt's grandma, who's watching and paying and logged in today. Matt, where is she coming from today? From Rapid City, South Dakota. Come on, Grandma Britt. Praise God. I am so glad you are with us this morning. We are also very proud of Matt, and I have a huge space waiting on my Facebook page for funny baby stories and pictures of Matt. So please do so. Please give me that gift. I would be so thankful. Hello, friends. Welcome. I'm Lance Marshall, one of the pastors here at the First United Methodist Church in downtown Fort Worth. Whether you're somewhere here in the city or somewhere anywhere in the Dakotas, I'm glad that you've joined us here today. Uh, We are in a series right now where we're focusing on the concept of praising God. Praising God. Remember, being thankful and uh, being appreciative is just one half of the equation. The relationship goes full circle when you share that praise and appreciation. And brought to mind something that happened yesterday. I had a very special day yesterday, a wonderful opportunity to be a part of a family wedding. Just a member of our family was getting married. My wife and I started dating when we were 16 years old, and uh, when we were 16, her cousin Michaela was five. And so Michaela has been a regular part of my life since she was five years old, since I was a junior in high school. And Michaela got married yesterday. And it was just so wonderful and beautiful, extra meaningful for me because I was the person who got to stand there and say, by the power vested in me, by our friends and family, by God, and by the great state of Texas, I now pronounce you husband and wife. I got a chance to do that, and it's always so special when I get to play that role in anyone's life, particularly someone whom I love so much, like Michaela and her new husband, Raphael. And if any of you have been in a wedding right now in corona times, they're a little bit different. Of course, they're smaller. They're a lot more spaced out. Uh, You need to do as much of it outside as possible. So we had an outdoor reception in the middle of July. Fortunately, yesterday was a cool and brisk day, so it was super comfortable. But I remember driving home and thinking about how much fun it was at that wedding. We had a great time yesterday, and just my heart was just full of joy. I was happy. I felt connected to everybody. I loved it, and I know everyone else did too. I mean, a, a wedding, right? A good wedding just... It's so easy to be appreciative and thankful uh, for what's happening around you. And I was spending time, it was a small wedding. It was a small family wedding. So I knew everybody there. I knew everybody there. Just a couple dozen of us. I knew everybody. Everybody having a great time. Everybody overflowing with love. Everybody happy and appreciative. And yet I also know all of those people. I mean, they're my family, right? They're my extended family. And I know what's going on in their lives. People at that wedding having a great time. They're all going through stuff. There's people there that are having real career issues. There's people there that are having real health issues. There's people there that are having real relationship issues. I mean, we're like everybody else, right? Our family's facing struggles, and that's even before you get into the fact that there's all these restrictions and difficulties in life right now, and life's not the same in the midst of the pandemic. I mean, we're all going through it, some of us more than others. Yeah, people didn't let that get in the way of them having a great time yesterday. People were still connected with the love and the greatness of what was happening in that place. I mean, every wedding is beautiful. Michaela and Raphael's even more so. Those of us that know them and love them are so proud of them. They've overcome so much already. They've grown into these wonderful people. I mean, God's at work in their lives. Something amazing is happening, and we were just basking in the glow of it yesterday. It was easy. It was easy. Have you ever been a part of something like that? You know, sometimes we forget that celebrating the goodness that's going on around us is actually a choice. We get to choose how we're going to act, how we're going to be. See, I uh, had that also come to mind yesterday. So uh, I have a three-year-old daughter, and yesterday my three-year-old daughter just woke up mean. (laughs) 
Do y'all ever have that happen? Do y'all ever have, or maybe this happens to you, you just wake up in a mood? I mean, she woke up in the mood, y'all. She was battle ready from the time she came down the stairs. And she sat down and she was immediately in her brother's business. She was immediately in my business. She wasn't happy with what was going on. She was giving everyone an earful about it. And in the first 30 minutes, I was already so worn out. I ended up calling her across the counter in the kitchen. And I said, baby girl, remember, you can choose to be happy if you want. I mean, you can choose to have a good time if you want. I mean, I just want to let you know, your favorite breakfast is on the table. Your favorite show is on TV. You're wearing your favorite Elsa nightgown. You got a whole day ahead of you. Your favorite babysitter, Miss Kate, is coming to play with you for hours today while you don't have to go to a wedding that would be super boring to you. Like, you got a lot to be happy for. You can choose to enjoy it if you want. Yeah, she didn't. <laughs> she didn't. I mean, she, she kept on keeping on. Uh, right on till we got home, actually. But she's three, right? We're not three. We can make better choices. See, one of the things that you won't hear me say is you should be grateful, or you should be appreciative, or you should take better account of all the blessings that are happening in your lives and the lives of people around you. See, life as a disciple is about living a life closely connected with God. That's all we're doing here. We individually, we're teaching you how to live lives more closely connected with God. It's what's made possible through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And too often, Christians internalize this as a whole list of things they should be doing differently. I should be praying more. I should be giving more. I should stop doing this. I should stop doing that. I should be more appreciative, etc. It should and should and should. That's the way that we talk to ourselves. And if you do that, you're constantly setting yourself up for failure. You're constantly setting yourself up to be in a position where you're drawing on your very limited willpower to try to change things in your life. Can I invite you into thinking differently about this? Instead of you should be doing that, you can be doing that. Remember, you can be happy if you want, right? You can pray if you want. You can pray. Live in connection with God. You can be generous if you want. Experience the gifts of what you're able to do with your resources. You can be a part of what God's doing in the world, helping serve those around you. It's an opportunity that's open to you. You can if you want. And part of that is if you want, you can be grateful. You can be appreciative. You can be connected to the wonderful things that are happening around you in the world, to the promises that God is keeping, to the restoration that God is doing, to the healing that God is making possible. If you want, even in the midst of your own troubles and difficulties, as immense as they be, you can be. A perfect example of this comes to us in our scripture reading today. It's in the book of Philippians in the New Testament. If you're new to reading the New Testament, you'll realize that uh, most of the, what we call the books of the New Testament are actually letters they're letters, and like every letter that's ever been written in the world, they're from someone to someone about something. And Philippians is a letter. It's written by a man we call the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul is that first generation of Jesus' followers, and Paul is called an apostle because he's traveling around and starting new churches and helping shape them and form them. And one of the things that he does is use the cutting-edge technology of the day, which is written letters being sent and curried to people, and he's using those letters to connect to people to connect with what's happening in the world, to connect with what God is doing through these emerging Christian churches, the lives that are being changed, uh, the miracles that are breaking off day by day. That's how he's staying connected. Paul writes this letter, and one of the first things that he does in the beginning of this letter is give praise to celebrate and connect with what's happening in the life of this church in Philippi. He's in a faraway city, but he's hearing of what's happening in Philippi, and he lets their joy be his. That's where we pick up today, Philippians chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. Hear these words. I thank my God every time I mention you in my prayers, Paul says. I'm thankful for all of you every time I pray, and it's always a prayer full of joy. I'm glad because of the way you have been my partners in the ministry of the gospel from the time you first believed it until now. I'm sure about this. The one who started a good work in you will stay with you to complete the job by the day of Jesus Christ. I have good reason to think this way about all of you because I keep you in my heart. You are all my partners in God's grace, both during my time in prison and in the defense and support of the gospel. God is my witness that I feel affection for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. This is my prayer 
that your love might become even more and more rich with knowledge and all kinds of insight. I pray this so that you will be able to decide what really matters, and so you will be sincere and blameless on the day of Christ. I pray that you will then be filled with the fruit of righteousness, which comes from Jesus Christ, in order to give glory and praise to God. Amen. God speaks to us through the reading of Scripture. Thanks be to God. Lastly, one of the things I asked you to do was to look back at your story. To look back at your story, your long life, and to see all the things that happened that were wonderful, that were miraculous, that were gifts, that were incredible. And for you to not only receive and be thankful for them, but for you to praise God for them all over again. Whether they happened yesterday or 50 years ago, praise God who made that possible. Celebrate what God did. Celebrate who God is. Praise God for what God has done in your life. To look back at your long story and recognize who God has always been and what God has always been doing in your life. Praise God. This week, I want you to look not only at your life right now, but at the lives and the world of the people around you with that same spirit of not only recognizing and being grateful for, but actively praising the God who's making it happen, regardless of your circumstances, regardless of how hard right now is regardless of the trials that you're facing, regardless of the struggles that you're going through, because you certainly are. Everyone is. And yet, there is still so much for which we need to praise God. What better example than Paul writing that letter, right? When I'm thinking about you all the time, I'm praising God for what's happening in your lives and the lives around you. Did you catch what happens in verse 7? Did you catch what he said? Do you know where he's writing that letter from? Not writing that letter from a fancy hotel room being put up in a patron in one of the nicest cities in the area. He's not writing that letter on a boat, taking him to yet another successful journey to start a new church for the glory of God. He's writing that letter from prison. The prison from which he will be taken to his execution. Paul's in jail. I've known a lot of people that have gone to prison. Not one of them at any moment has ever forgotten that they are in prison. They have never not been suffering under the weight of what they're going through and what got them there. Paul's in prison. And it's going to lead him to his death. And what he's thinking about in the midst of that, he hasn't forgotten for one second what he's going through. And still, he recognizes that all around me, miracles are breaking out. Lives are being changed. The church is on the move. The Holy Spirit won't be stopped. And the good news that Jesus proclaims about the Father is true, and it's changing the world. Praise God, and praise God for what's happening in your life because of it. Do you want to live like that? Do you want to live like that? You can. Did you know that? You can be the kind of person who even in the midst of struggles which are real and trials which are deep and consequences which are hard, even in the midst of that, you can have a life if you choose that is marked by that kind of attitude that experiences that kind of love, that knows that kind of grace. It's not a should thing. It's a can thing. You can. Here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. One of the things that I've taught you for years now is the practice of, at the end of the day, taking stock of what happened. Stopping and looking around. I hope that you're one of the people that does that with journaling. If you're not, if you're just someone who does it while you brush your teeth, that's fine. Look back through your day. Look back through your day. Look back through what you've read in the newspaper. Look back through what you've heard from the people that you're talking to. Look back and take stock. And I know that you are going through so much right now. So much that's tough. So much that's hard. So much that hurts. I know it. And yet in your life and the lives of people around you, God is still at work. You know how to find it. Just know what kind of God God is and look for God on the move. God's the kind of God who heals. What are the stories of healing 
that are happening in the lives of you or the people that you love and know or the people that you see around you. People are being healed every day. Praise God. God's the kind of God who provides. God's the kind of God who provides. And all around you today, people are receiving provision. People are receiving support. People are receiving aid all around you. That's God on the move. Praise God. God is the kind of God who protects. And all around you, you may know him, you just may be hearing about him, you just may be trusting that it's happening, but people who need to be protected, people who need to be cared for, people who need to be brought into a safer place are receiving exactly what they need when they need it. Praise God. God is the kind of God who makes a way out of no way, and it's happening over and over and over again in the midst of one of the hardest times that any of us will ever see. Praise God. A life like Paul's, a spirit like Paul's, a confidence like Paul's, a knowledge of God's grace like Paul's isn't just something we should do. It's something we can. It's something we can do. Take a look a lot around. The world around you, the people around you, the stories around you. God is not done with us yet. Amen. God is working. Amen. God is present. Amen. God is at work in and through God's people then, now, and forever. And it's happening today. Praise God. For the rest of your day, for the rest of your week, for the rest of your life. You can choose to pay attention and celebrate the goodness, the greatness, the works of mercy, compassion, hope, and life-saving grace that God is doing every day, even in the midst of the dark. Because that's who God is. And that's who God is for us. Amen? Let us pray. Great and loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, great are you and greatly to be praised. God, we're pushing ourselves, we're stretching ourselves, we're moving ourselves towards a posture of not just recognizing all that has happened in our lives, in our communities, in the lives of people around us, for which we are thankful and appreciative, but God, we are lifting up our words of praise to you for that work. God, we celebrate you the healer, the provider, the redeemer, the sustainer, the protector, the God who makes a way out of no way. We praise you, God. We praise you for who you are. We praise you for who you promise that we are. And it's together as the children of God and the followers of your son, Jesus, that we pray the words together that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.